Welcome back to Fundamentals of Operating Systems based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition by Silbershots, Gagne, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson, we began our exploration of page replacement policies. We had just begun discussing the least recently used algorithm for page replacement. So let's pick up where we left off. The least recently used policy is often used as a page replacement algorithm and is considered to be good. The major problem is how to implement least recently used. And a, a least recently used page replacement algorithm may require substantial hardware assistance. The problem is to determine an order for the frames to find by the time of last use. There are two implementations possible for this. We can use counters. In the simplest case, we associate with each page table entry a time of use field and add to the CPU a logical clock or counter. The clock is incremented for every memory reference. Whenever a reference to a page is made, the contents of the clock register are copied to the time of use field in the page table entry for that page. In this way, we always have the time of the last reference to a page. We replace the page with the smallest time value. This scheme requires a search of the page table to find the least recently used page and a write to memory to the time of use field in the page table for each memory access. The times must also be maintained when page tables are changed due to CPU scheduling. Overflow of the clock must be considered as well. We can also use a stack. Another approach to implementing least recently used replacement is to keep a stack of page numbers. Whenever a page is referenced, it is removed from the stack and put back on the top. In this way, the most recently used page is always at the top of the stack, and the least recently used page is always at the bottom of the stack. This is shown in the figure on the right. Because entries must be removed from the middle of the stack, it is best to implement this approach by using a doubly linked list with a head pointer and a tail pointer. Removing a page and putting it on top of the stack then requires changing six pointers at worst. Each update is a little more expensive, but there is no search for a replacement. The tail pointer points to the bottom of the stack which is the least recently used page. This approach is particularly appropriate for software or microcode implementations of least recently used replacement. Optimal replacement and least recently used replacement both belong to a class of page replacement algorithms called stack algorithms that can never exhibit Bellady's anomaly. A stack algorithm is an algorithm for which it can be shown that the set of pages in memory for a certain number of frames is always a subset of pages that would be in memory with that number of frames. For least recently used replacement, the set of pages in memory would be all of the pages most recently referenced. If the number of frames is increased, these pages will still be the most recently referenced and so will still be in memory. Make a note that neither implementation of least recently used would be conceivable without hardware assistance beyond the standard TLB registers. The updating of the clock fields or stack must be done for every memory reference. If we were to use an interrupt for every reference to allow software to update such data structures, it would slow every memory of reference by a factor of at least 10, slowing every process by a factor of at least 10. Few systems could tolerate that level of overhead for memory management. Few computer systems provide enough hardware support for true least recently used page replacement. And some systems provide no hardware support at all. 
and other page replacement algorithms such as first in first out algorithm must be used. Many systems provide some help though in the form of a reference bit. The reference bit for a page is set by the hardware whenever that page is referenced. Reference bits are associated with each entry in the page table. Initially all bits are cleared to zero by the operating system. As the process executes, the bit associated with each page referenced is set to 1 by the hardware. After some time, we can determine which pages have been used and which pages have not been used by examining the reference bits, although we don't know the order of the use. This information is the basis of many page replacement algorithms that approximate least recently used replacement. One might ask when the reference bit is ever zeroed after the initial reset. It would seem necessary to do so after some period has passed and all pages ever referenced are still set to 1. That would definitely have a factor in keeping the information current. We can gain additional ordering information by recording the reference bits at regular intervals. We can keep an 8-bit byte for each page in a table in memory. At regular intervals, say 100 milliseconds, a timer interrupt transfers control to the operating system. It would set the uh, a high order bit, the one on the left, to 1 and shift all the others over to the right and discard the low order bit, which is the one on the right. These 8-bit shift registers contain the history of page use for the last 8 time periods. If the shift register contains all zeros, then the page has not been used for eight time periods. A page that's been used at least once in each period would have a shift register of all ones. A page with a history register of 11000100 would have been used more recently than the one with the value 01110111. If we interpret these 8-bit bytes as unsigned integers, the page with the lowest number is the least recently used page and can be replaced. All right, you interpret this as an integer. Right now we have a binary number. Perhaps you recall from your earlier introductory courses the process of converting a binary number to a decimal number or an integer. You see the position values of a binary number with the lowest order bit being 1 and the highest order bit being 128, and you'll notice that they double all the way across. And so therefore, if all of the bits were turned on, if you wanted to do a decimal conversion, you would just simply add those decimal numbers together. Now if you take our two 8-bit registers, all added together is 196, and this one all added together is 119, which tells you that the lowest valued integer is the least recently used. Now we understand that these numbers are not guaranteed to be unique. So we can either replace all pages with the smallest value or use first in first out method to choose among them. The number of bits of history included in the shift register can be varied, of course, and is selected to make updating as fast as possible. In extreme cases, the number can be reduced to zero, leaving only the reference bit itself. This algorithm is called the second chance replacement algorithm. Well, this is a good place to stop. I just noticed I've got an error here in this slide where it added up all these bits that were turned on and came up with 256. That's actually 255. Apparently while I was creating that I was thinking in terms of network addresses where you have 256 addresses in a byte, but the first address is zero. The last address is 255. So that should be 255, but just ignored. It. It's a mistake. Okay, let's take a break here, update your study guide, look over your notes, and when you're ready, come on back and we'll start a new one.